One of the best parts about Cambodia is the nature. It's not exactly easy to get to. All the hiking spots that I've been to have been several hours out of the city, but there is a natural untouched beauty to them in that you don't have paved trails, you don't have very good markings, which can be a downside if you're not going with a guide or you're trying to do this alone. But you feel like you're being in a place that is untouched by man, someplace undisturbed. And of course, there is litter every so often, and you'll probably run into a couple hikers on days like when we went hiking, because it was beautiful weather, and of course, everyone wants to enjoy it. But it makes it very easy to pretend that you're the only person around. It's something that I really enjoy, this solitude that you can find, even if you are with a group, just because you are so far away from all the distractions, the hustle and bustle, and of course, away from the internet. I notice whenever I go on long rides, you know, you spend time on your phone, you do it idly. You're having a conversation with someone and your eyes flicker down to that thing in your hand. You get a notification and you look down at it. One of my professors uh, had a little joke where he would have us put all of our phones in a container at the front of the room and he called it the crack pipe box because the same part of your brain that lights up when a crack addict sees the pipe lights up when we hear notification. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's so important to go on these hikes and these little excursions outside the city. Not only do you get a chance to really see the beauty of Cambodia, especially in contrast with the dirt of the city, the muck, the bustle, the unfortunate underbelly of Phnom Penh, but it's also just really nice to get a chance to be alone with yourself. It was about a two hour drive to the Chambok waterfall, and it was about an eight kilometer hike round trip. The first stop, of course, was the waterfall, which was absolutely gorgeous. It was very big, and it was very easy to see, to actually walk up to, which is something that, you know, you don't always get to do when it comes to waterfalls. In um, Georgia, there was a couple falls that were really beautiful, really tall, but the issue was it was impersonal and it felt so removed because of the inclusion of like metal stairs or handrails or a bridge and you weren't actually able to interact with the scenery. That wasn't the case here. The only thing restricting you was how much you wanted to risk getting your shoes wet or how many rocks you wanted to scramble up. The water was absolutely wonderful, clear, refreshing. The stones were not too hard to tra uh, transverse. You could figure out a couple ways to get to the waterfall itself. I chose to go through the water first and then climb up. And you know, the closer that you got, the more you could hear the sound of the water rushing. We ended up getting caught with a short cloudburst, just a few minutes of rain, which ended up messing up some of my footage. But overall, it was a really majestic view, one that was really nice to just sit and take in after hiking up this pretty good incline, it's pretty good distance. After a picnic and a nice little break at the falls, we went on our way to the Bat Caves, which is basically a little crack in the wall, and you can climb up and climb in and kind of see the bats and everything. Although I didn't do that because I've seen enough horror movies to know that entering dark, small spaces is how the you know first kill usually happens. And I don't think anyone on the trip took any good footage of that out of fear of, you know, like a flash startling the bats, which I can imagine the horror of being pressed in there with five other people and flash and then a vortex of bats appears. But it was still really nice to walk up there because you get to see a lot of these bamboo um, growths and a lot of a lot more clear walking space. It was still obviously wasn't maintained to the level that a lot of trails in the US are, especially national parks. 
but it was still nice to see different scenery and it wasn't a particularly difficult walk to head up the slight hill to the rocks itself. Even from outside, you got to see something pretty amazing with the color of the sandstone being a really cool pinkish reddish color, which I thought was pretty cool to see. After we finished at the Bat Cave, we headed back to the bus, which was again about, I, th uh, I think maybe a, f f a couple kilometers walk back from the, to the trailhead, but you don't really feel it, I think, because no one's going at like a breakneck pace. That's one thing that I like about these trips with Valentina, because you don't feel rushed if you are out of shape, if you're tired, if you get injured or whatever. There is nobody, you know, trucking that they're training for a triathlon or something. Y'all are just there to have fun, to socialize, to hike and enjoy the nature. And not having a pressure to go at a specific speed really can help if you're not someone who's used to hiking or someone who's out of shape or if you just don't want to feel pressured. And eventually we got back to our bus and it took us a little bit around two hours to get back, I think. Truthfully, I fell asleep on the bus ride back because I'm essentially nocturnal and we got up early and then hiked a bunch and then drove. Um, and overall, it was a really nice, pleasant day and one that I'm sure that I'll get to have again the next time Valentina hosts a hiking trip.